My name is Joel Bylos. I'm the creative director on Dune Awakening. So Dune Awakening is a survival, open world, massively multiplayer game. It is a game where players are invited to explore the world of Dune. They involve themselves in politics, they involve themselves in intrigue, they involve themselves in combat, they have to survive on the most dangerous planet in the universe. And through this experience, they come to know the factions in the world and the universe. So when Dune Awakening begins, you are a castaway on the planet in the deep desert, and all you have is a knife that you've made out of scrap metal. And you need to creep into enemy camps and knife them in the back and steal the water from their steel suits. By the end of the game, perhaps you're running a guild. You have a fleet of vehicles, ornithopters flying in formation, sand bikes cruising across the desert beneath them, tanks kicking up a cloud of dust as you drive to a spice blow in the distance in order to harvest with your guild. And you see in the distance another guild coming towards you and just as you clash, you hear the rumble of a sandworm coming. That's combat in Dune Awakening. My name is Vilja Sommerbach. I'm the game director on Dune Awakening. You start out in the desert, surviving, clinging to life, and in the end, you might become someone like the Baron Harkonnen, and then you try to cling to power. Arrakis is the most dangerous planet in the universe. Uh, surviving on Arrakis means that you need to prepare for sandstorms, you need to find water, it's a constant threat against uh, survival. Water discipline is an important part of survival. In the beginning it might just be water for yourself, in the end you might need industrial levels of water because you have industrialized your base. Um, and the storms are an important part of survival as well. You have to find shelter in the beginning, you have nothing to your name. After a while you will have a base and then you will be build a bigger base so that that doesn't become as important. But then you always have to go out in the desert and make sure that you can compete against the desert. Um, in the end, you might even be riding the storms uh, of the desert to actually gain access to unique resources. But you always need to return, and every time you go out, you have to be careful of the worm. Because if you get caught by the worm, there will be nothing left of you, and you will leave nothing behind. With Dune, we have a particular focus on a style of combat that we like to call combined arms. And it takes all of the elements that players would expect from the books and the movies, and it puts them together in this great chaotic kind of experience. Um, so we have vehicle combat, we have abilities that you might see in the great schools in the Dune universe, we have melee combat and we have range combat, and all of these things work together to create both player versus environment, PvE kind of combat, as well as massive PvP battles for players to participate in. And it's the combination of these things that really makes it feel like sandbox combat, where players have the ability to you know, pick their loadouts and see how they go into battle. We have a broad specter of combat capabilities. We have melee weapons like knives and swords. We have range weapons. Uh, then we have ground vehicles and air vehicles. They all come with configurable capabilities like last guns, rockets, um, mini guns, things like that. Uh, you will be fighting on foot, you'll be driving vehicles, you'll be flying in ornithopter, and it all comes together there. Um, the more coordinated you are, the better it is, the better prepared you are, the better it will be. If you're playing with someone for the first time or you didn't prepare properly, um, it will be chaotic, but if you prepare, if you coordinate, then you will perform with lethal efficiency. So, the world of Arrakis is full of political intrigue, and we have this fantastic concept from the stories called Canley. And Canley is basically the rules of engagement. It's this thing called the Great Convention that defines areas of the world where players are allowed to interact in different ways. So in Dune Awakening, players will have different areas of the world that are enabled for, for example, full, full player versus player combat and areas that are safer and, and you know, that are patrolled by Sardaukar troops and kept safe. And so uh, players really have this sort of free opportunity within the sandbox to find the locations where they can fight with each other or to stay in the locations where they're safer. Right? And that's up to the player and how they want to approach the game. In Dune Awakening, we've got many different types of weapons from across the universe, drawing upon the books and the movies. We have las guns, mauler pistols, we have scatter guns, pellet guns. Um, in addition, we have all of the sort of melee weapons you'd expect to see, Chris knives and kinjals and short swords and rapiers. 
And in addition to that, of course, we also have abilities that players can learn through the great schools of the universe, such as uh, Mentat abilities or Benny Gesserit skills. You can fight other players wearing Holtzman shields. There's a, a system involved where people will want to get close because the slow blade penetrates. And uh, so you want to use melee to get through a shield in a duel like that. Um, and of course, like if people don't have shields because shields draw the sandworm, you want to make sure that you use ranged weapons. So there's a, there's a real interplay between systems, between the way that shields interact with both the world and the environment with sandworms, and also how they interact in close personal combat. Anytime that you step onto the sands of Arrakis, you risk drawing the worm. You can multiply that by driving vehicles on the surface. You can multiply that by using shields or suspensor belts. Holtzman technology will draw the worm. June Awakening is built upon a foundation of five pillars. Survival, which is obviously everything you'd expect to see in a survival game. It's water discipline, it's the surviving the sandstorms that sweep across Arrakis. Then we have politics and intrigue, which speaks to the faction gameplay of the game. It's about, you know, siding with one of the factions, thinking about how they work together, perhaps assassinating members of the other factions. Then there's infinite exploration. Infinite exploration, which is one of the things I'm most excited about, is how the world changes over time. We have a concept called a Coriolis storm, and when it sweeps across the landscape, the sands shift, revealing new points of interest, hiding others, making the game renewed every week. Then we have combined arms. Combined arms is our combination of vehicles, melee combat, range combat, and abilities, all working together to create a seamless sandbox combat experience. And finally, we have expression and customization, which is really more than just talking about like the visual expression and customization, which of course we have armor sets and clothing and a, and a robust character creation. But in addition to that, it's really about play the way you want to play. Do you want to be a trader? You can do that. Do you want to be a fighter? Of course you can do that. Do you want to be a spy? Maybe that's the gameplay you're looking for. All of these things built into these pillars. So Anarchy Online, when we started, um, Anarchy Online was a huge undertaking for Funcom at the time. Um, we didn't always know what we were doing, but we were learning on the job to a large extent. As Funcom now has a long track record of MMOs, um, we know we're not new when it comes to uh, challenges relating to server technology, to uh, relating to player population balancing. Uh, with relating to the RPG uh, aspects of it. So everything that went into the earlier MMOs that we did comes into play here. Uh, we are taking it a lot further though, because we're not a traditional MMO in the sense that there's combat in our game is much more second to second and intense than you would find in an MMO, for instance. It's much based on uh, the second to second experience, how melee, how ranged, how gadgets and abilities, how ground vehicles, how air vehicles, how it comes together uh, in the ultimate uh, challenge that is getting spice. In June Awakening, PvP is about large-scale competition and small-scale competition. Players in guilds competing for spice resources in the world. And our PvP can be done on many levels between players, right? It doesn't necessarily mean players killing players, it can also be players out intriguing other players, finding ways to give them false information, tricking them into going to the wrong area to look for a spice block, or perhaps like misleading them into looking at an, in, in an enemy base for the wrong thing, right? In our game, spice is obviously a very important mechanic as it is in Frank Herbert's stories. Uh, as players consume spice, they unlock the ability to level up skills in the game. And those skills, as you train them, you choose which ones to train, you have active skill training, as you train those skills, the more spice you consume, the more you're allowed to train. If you don't have a lot of spice in your blood, you obviously can't train as much. However, this also comes at the cost of becoming woefully addicted to spice. So the journey of the player, we've divided that into four parts. Uh, we think of them as survive, protect, 
expand control. The survive part means that you're up against the planet itself and you're clinging on to life. In the protect phase, um, you have gathered some stuff, you might have a base, uh, but you also want to make sure that nobody else comes to, to take it away from you. So you try to build defenses and make sure that your base is in the clear. Then, in the expand phase, you lift your gaze and you look around and you see that others have stuff as well and you might want to take their stuff. Uh, then, in the control phase, you may find yourself being a part of a guild or even the leader of a guild. Then, the goal is to control the flow of spies on Arrakis. However, you're never safe. Uh, there's always someone lurking around the corner. Can you really trust your second in command? So, the goal of the control phase is that you are clinging to control. In Dune Awakening, we have a wide array of combat capabilities. Um, infantry consists of melee with knives, swords. You have ranged weaponry, gas-powered, last guns. Um, you have gadgets, you have abilities. Uh, and building on that, we have ground vehicles, we have air vehicles with their own combat com capabilities. Um, and when all of this comes together, you'll find yourself in the desert, uh, in a spice harvesting operation, uh, and there might be another guild uh, attacking, attacking you to get your spice. And whenever you get into combat in the desert of Arrakis, try to get it over with quickly, because not only are you fighting human combatants, but the planet Arrakis itself is the greatest protagonist there is. As you're fighting in the desert, uh, there might be a sandstorm rolling in, and the sandworm will be attracted to the vibrations that you cause. So get it over with quickly, and then return to solid ground. So, I mean, I love to interact with the community. You should join us on our Discord channel. You should go to Steam and wishlist us so that we know how many people are excited about our game. And of course, go to juneawakening.com and sign up for our beta.